Hello and welcome to Superliminal Games. My name is Max and we are going for redemption. That's right, we are going to quick draft Rivals of Ixalan on MTG Arena. Now, if you were with us during our live stream or if you've caught the YouTube, uh, I'll try to remember my best to put a link in the description, but I'm going to try my hardest to remember that. I'm going to maybe put a note on the file name. I'm going to do something to remember. Uh, so you can check out the previous Rivals of Ixalan draft that I did during our live stream, wherein I kind of let the chat take over a little bit too much, and things went pretty haywire for us. So my goal tonight is to attempt to outdo my performance, which was 4-3, and three, with what ended up being a four-color deck in Ixalan block, which is pretty preposterous because... The format is not like Dominaria, where you have time to play your cards. You generally have to ca uh, draft a curve-conscious deck that is being proactive and trying to accomplish its plan in a relatively quick fashion. So, we didn't do that last time. We drafted kind of a four-color pile, but managed to take it to four and three. So, I'm going to try my darndest to outdo that performance. At least I'm pretty sure it was 4-3. I don't think it was 5-3. and three. So I'm going to try my darndest to get at least 5-3, and three, if not, hopefully, uh, 6 or 7, and maybe just not get 3 losses, which would be ideal. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to pay 750 gems to confirm, in fact, we wish to quick draft this format. Let me go ahead and change the layout so we can work through these cards. Induced Amnesia is not very good. Uh, I mean, if we were trying to mill strategy, yes, but there's no chat, so we don't have to do that, Disco Computer. Uh, Reaver Ambush, we have Daring Buccaneer, we have Shake the Foundations, Luminous Bonds, Sanguine Glorifier, Sworn Guardian, Crashing Tide, Soul of the Rapids, Fathom Fleet Border, Jungle Pioneer, Rosca Raptor, Sun Collared, Sun -collared Raptor, and uh, Fathom Fleet Firebrand, who's a personal favorite of mine. But I think the picks here are pretty straightforward for us we're going to go for some type of removal because we did not open a bomb and the general draft ethos is you want to draft your bombs when you can and then you want to try to draft your good removal when you can because everybody else is trying to prioritize bombs so if they get one you want to be able to deal with it reaver ambush is very solid early game removal it gets rid of a power three uh creature with power three or less it's pretty good Daring Buccaneer gets onto the board quickly as a 2-2 for 1. They can come in on the second turn, which is pretty aggressive. But in this format, it can get outclassed relatively quickly, so it's kind of a dangerous pick. Luminous Bonds, while it is a common, is a really solid pickup because it just simply shuts a creature off completely. It doesn't have the claws like Reaver Ambush does, power 3 or less. So it's, to me, between the Luminous Bonds and the Reaver Ambush, with a third being the Daring Buccaneer, I do think that Crashing Tide is pretty good, but I don't think it's I don't think this is a card you want to be first picking with other more powerful cards in the pack. So to me it's one of those two. Jungleborn Pioneer is good, but not one of the premier Merfolk that would put you on a Merfolk strategy out of the gate. So to me it's the Reaver Ambush or the Luminous Bond. I'm tending to lean towards the Reaver Ambush. Uh, another good reason to mention that is because Fathom Fleet Border is pretty good, but not great. Uh, the other reason Luminous Bonds is good because Sanguine Glorifier, again. Good but not great. So those are two colors that are very poorly represented in this pack. So we can easily, if this were a human draft, we could send a very easy signal that one of these colors is being cut from the early part of the draft to try to get our opponents intentionally into something like blue or red. So then we could avoid those colors because green is also very underrepresented. We could literally cut the only green card in this pack if we were drafting with humans. But on Magic Arena, you are drafting with AI that is using information that's being fed to it from Magic Arena as well as MTGO. So you got to be aware of that as well. So um, between Bonds and Reaver Ambush, they're both very good. Uh, a deck, I think I'd... I mean, either deck could be, okay, you're on your way towards Vampires because it's black or white. Black would also put us in leaning towards a black-red pirate deck. Or we could also kind of branch out into uh, blue-black pirates. Or we could also branch out... Uh, Green-black's not really a supported color combination. There's like Jungle Creeper. But you want to try to get into a, an actual tribe. So the question also in this set is... What tribe do you think is stronger based on these colors? Like we're, just we're just drafting removal. So white puts us into dinosaurs. Or into vampires, generally. 
whereas black puts us more towards pirates of some stripe and or vampires. So we could draft vampires either way, which is a good a good tribe in my opinion. I think dinosaurs is stronger than pirates for the most part, but I think a good pirate deck is better than a good dinosaur deck, whereas a mediocre dinosaur deck can generally pick up a couple games that a like a generally mediocre pirate deck could not. <laughs> That being said, I like the instant speed here. A lot of times you're tapping out, it kind of is inconsequential on the instant speed, where the Luminous Bonds just has that catch-all. I'm really just kind of buying time while I make my choice, and I'm just trying to give you all something to listen to while I kind of seal my fate here. And granted, it's not a problem to jump off of either color, but I think I'm going to go with the Luminous Bonds. That may not be right. And again, if you have, please leave comments. We love comments. We love to engage with everybody who's watching these videos. So if you have something to say, I want to hear it. Seriously. If it's contentious, that's cool. I have no problem arguing. I'm in for it. Uh, if you're more experienced at this format than I am, let me know the deal. Like, you're an idiot. This is why you take this. And I go, oh, okay. Uh, I'm rewarded, granted. I would have been rewarded either way because Impale is an insane card in this format. It's not quite Chupacabra levels insane, but it's real close. And we also have in color Forerunner of the Legion, so we could firmly plant ourselves into vampires if we wanted to. Also in the pack is a Divine Verdict, which I don't hate. Uh, the Pterodon is not as bad as I thought it might be in this format. Um, Colossal Dreadmall is very playable, as is the Armasaur. But Overall, it's an easy Forerunner or Impale. Had I taken Reaver Ambush, I would have kept into the Impale to keep myself open. Again, White Black can be vampires, right? We see the Forerunner. The question is, is the Forerunner of the is it worth specking on this Forerunner early over this Impale? So it's a really interesting question. If we were in a human draft, again, this would send a little bit of a mixed signal because black would be open. So our opponents would go, oh, okay, I should probably get into something that's black, which again would be leaning towards vampires. So luckily this is not a human draft, so we just really have to kind of ask ourselves, do we think that the, the Forerunner is a more powerful card than the straight-up piece of removal? So the question then becomes, is this in fact a bomb? And I think it kind of is. It stops dead draws. It kind of puts another card on top of your deck. It requires you to have another decently board impactful vampire, but that's not really hard to do in this format. Where the impale is just nice, clean removal. We won't fall behind. We have removal spell on three, removal spell on four, which is really nice. So the question is, do we? How badly do we want to spec on a vampire deck? Um, I've not done a vampire deck in this format yet. Uh, so I think either are very attractive. I think Impale is definitely the safer pick. I think Forerunner's a little bit more of a spicy pick. I think the Discipline pick is the Impale. I think the kind of eyes, you know, pie in the sky, hoping that, you know, things go well pick is the Forerunner. So let's go ahead and do that because it makes for more exciting TV. And hope we get, uh, something here. Well, wow. Wow. Wowie, wow, wow. Making me just feel bad for not being in black. Moment of Craving and Impale. Both are insane removal spells in this format. Like, some of the best stuff in the format. For white, we have a Helioptorus, and we have a Ceratops, both of which I think are much lower impact than Impale or Moment of Craving. I really like Moment of Craving in this format because this format comes down to racing situations so frequently. Moment of Craving can really throw things into your favor. It's cheap and only one black pip, where Impale is two black pips. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take Moment here and most likely lock us into uh, white-black vampires at this point. <laughs> Moving into the next pack, we're getting punished pretty hard for our choices because all we really have to pick from is a recover or a moment of triumph. I don't mind having a combat trick in my in uh, in my deck certainly. Uh, plus two plus two gain two life again nice because it can throw off the racing math. Where it recovers a little bit better in a slower deck where it can get back these higher impact cards. With cards like Forerunner of the Legion, it's really good because not only can we return the Forerunner, we can then recast it. We've drawn a card off the recover and we can get yet another vampire on top of our deck. So it really helps mitigate a lot of these dead draws. That being said, we're already on two three drops and I'd like to keep 
a lower drop in the deck. So I'm going to go for the Moment of Triumph because I think e e either choice is easy to pick up later on. And I think the Moment's just a little bit better for a curve at the moment. <laughs> Continuing onward and upward, we have uh, a couple black creatures, a Grasping Scoundrel, who I certainly don't mind picking up, and also a Dinosaur Hunter that I don't also don't mind picking up. Uh, it just death touches against a dino, which is really good in this format. Also on white, we have Raptor Companion, which I also dig in this format. So any of these are good. Notably, none of these are vampires, but we're not going to be able to pick a vampire every single time. So it's reasonable to have a non-vampire in our deck. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Raptor Companion, because like I said, I really do like that card in this format. Next up, each opponent loses a life for each creature control. Not really what we're digging on. Uh, we have... Sorry, not a negate. We don't really want a negate. Divine Verdict, which I do like quite a bit. I also like Spire Winder quite a bit. But Blue-White isn't really a supported archetype because there's no tribe to go with it. There is the Resplendent Griffin, I think its name is, that's in Blue and White. But And we saw one before, so it could table because Blue-White, again, is not really a popular color com uh, combination in this format because it's not supported by a tribe. So we could try something like grab up the Spire Winder and then hope that that Resplendent Griffin tables and then go into keep the opportunity like the option to go blue white open in case we pick up a blue white bomb um divine verdict is just simply good removal not great removal but good removal on color so that would keep us more towards the goal and uh, the like spire wonders aren't impossible to pick up so i don't really think we have to jump on that right here so i'm going to go ahead and take divine verdict <laughs> Continuing onward, we have a Sun Sentinel who's pretty medium, but the only thing really in the color. And also, not like Hornswoggle, Brazen Freebooter, Dreadmaul's like a fine playable. I don't mind Enter the Unknown, but it's not really good. Uh, Solar Rapids also fine, but not enough to really move us off color when the Sun Sentinel's here. It's, it's a two drop. That's fine. We need those. So I'm not hating it, but I'm not loving it. So... We'll see kind of how things continue to move. There's a Snubhorn Century who's not that bad, but not that good either. And other than that, we have a Recover or a Pitiless Plunderer. Pitiless Plunderer, while I love it in Commander, I don't really love it in Draft. Uh, Recover, I think, as I said before, it's a really solid option. I do think these are very easy to pick up. I think the Snubhorns are a little harder to pick up, and they do end up paying dividends a little later in the game. So they're good, they're good early, they're decent late, they're never lighting the world on fire for you, but they're pretty good. Today's drink, Scotch on the Rocks. Uh, I've been drinking Monkey Shoulder, I'm sure I've talked about this before on the, uh, the videos or the live stream. Extremely good budget Scotch, bottles generally go somewhere in the $35 to $40 range, and it competes with Scotches I've had, which were much more expensive. So if that's not a budget option for you, or you're not a Scotch fan... You know what I mean? Again, in the comments below, let me know what your drinking choice is, and I'll make a recommendation. But Monkey Shoulder, if you're into Scotch, what's up? Uh, Snubhorn or Recover. I think the Snubhorn's a little bit more important, because you just want creatures in this format. And now we're back to the pack we opened, and now there's everything of the colors we were in is totally picked. So I'm going to go ahead and I want to swap layouts so I can kind of see what we look like and also engage our sideboard. Uh, I'm going to snatch up the, I think it's the Firebrand for us, is pretty good. It's not really where we want to be, but it's pretty good. Okay, finally get a chance to draft a Vampire. Vampire Revenant's better than it looks in this format, and it's got great art. But it's not lighting the world on fire, but we'll certainly take it here this late. We'll try another. I don't. I hope we don't have to run both, but I don't hate running them. But we'll hope to avoid that. A lot of green sideboard cards again. Uh, if I haven't explained this before, you haven't seen one of our videos. On Arena, we're playing Quick Draft, and that's just Game 1s. That's all. There's no board and then Game 2. That's the competitive draft format they just introduced recently. Um, competitive draft is the normal traditional draft format. You're still drafting with AI, however, so it makes things a little bit more interesting. I haven't done it because it's Dominaria, and I've been kind of stinking it up at Dominaria. It's definitely different draft format than a lot of the more recent ones. It's fun because you get to play a lot of your cards, but it tends to punish good curve decks, unless you're on Wizards, because you're more instead trying to get the most value out of high-impact cards, and it's a really weird draft strategy for me. So I'm, I haven't had the easiest time adapting myself to it. I think it's a lot of fun, 
And I think people who get mad because they're not good at draft or have a tough read on draft formats and say they're not fun for that reason have the wrong attitude. But for me, it's just extremely difficult. It's extremely fun, and I play with my friends as many times as I can. But as far as actually having to draft it and put a bunch of gems on the line and try to perform, I'm still not confident enough on that yet. I'd like to get a couple more quick drafts in before I go down that road. <laughs> Onto this pack, we have an Oath Sworn Vampire who's pretty good but not great. And we have a Moment of Craving, which as I said before is pretty fantastic. And a Snubhorn Century. Uh, standout cards in this pack, pretty much relegated to the Regisaur and the Moment of Craving. There's some other stuff in here that's okay. The dead, the rig hauler is pretty sweet, but for us especially, we're pretty low on things we can play. I'm gonna go ahead and just take another moment. I think it is very good, and having removal in this format is a very good idea. Tender shoe dryad's a bomb if it can stick. It's hard to stick because it's a two-two, so it's very easy to kill. Curious obsession's a sweet card. Sailor means has only gotten better uh, once rivals came into the format. Secrets of the uh, Golden City is a really fun deck to be playing. Um, we have Impale and we have Dusk Legion Zealot. I think these are a little easier to pick up, the Dusky Z's, so I'm going to go ahead and pick up an Impale here uh, because there's no real white cards outside of the Exuberant or Exultant Sky Marcher, which is actually really good. It's not phenomenal, but it's pretty good role player. but I'm going to go ahead and take the Impale here just to make sure we can keep the board state clear. Um, into this pack, there's a Mausoleum Harpy, which is okay. It definitely has performed weaker than it appears that it should. We also have uh, a Sun Sentinel and a Moment of Craving. I'm just going to grab up another moment. At this point, we're like white-black removal, but I can I can live with that. <laughs> I can live with that. We have Temple Altisaur. Uh, three, four, for five. If a source would deal damage to another dinosaur, another dinosaur is important bit there. Prevent all but one of that damage, which is kind of cool. Um, we have Arterial Flow. Each opponent discards two cards. If you control a vampire, each opponent loses two life, you gain two life. Kind of a medium tack on to a Mind Rot effect. Mind Rots generally aren't too great in this format because it's just so quick you need to be playing to the board. I think another Divine Verdict is a little sluggish for that exact reason. So, I mean, maybe we just grab up the Altasaur as kind of a body. Uh, we do for we do have a Snubhorn, which is a, uh, a dinosaur. We do have a Raptor, which is a, a dinosaur. But the Raptor, it's a moot point because it still dies on one damage. So we'll grab up the Altasaur and we'll continue our Vampire Dinosaur build. Uh, we have a Helioptorus, and we also have a Ceratops, which is a choice we saw in an, another pack. I'm going to grab the Helioptorus just to give us some evasion. Alright, so now we actually have a couple dinosaurs or a horse. Dinosaurs, vampires, or a horse. Pick so many dinosaurs, I'm calling them dinosaurs now. Sanguine Glorifier puts a 1-1 counter on another vampire, and Famish Paladin doesn't untap unless you gain a life, which we have multiple Moment of Cravings, we have three of them. We have, um, what else gains us life in here? There's a couple things that gain us life, right? Maybe I'm crazy? Uh, the Moment of Triumph. So we have four cards right now that gain us life. So the Paladin's not awful, but it's also not great. But it comes down in a nice spot on the curve, which I like a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and draft it, because I do like the horse. But I, I mean, next pack we might be able to grab up uh, some of the Create Two Vampires for three, the tokens. I'm hoping for something like that. But the famous Paladin right now just seems like a better pickup from our perspective. <laughs> Alright, moving into the next pack. We're just going to grab up the Raptor Companion. Easy pick there. Uh, continuing on, again, the only card really in color outside of a Gleaming Barrier. We'll grab another Snubhorn out of this pack. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and swap views again. And engage our sideboard. And we'll go ahead and tack a Sailor of Means into it. I can't believe that's still in the pack, by the way. Uh, cleansing Ray destroys a vampire, destroys an enchantment. Not really great, but you know, if we were playing a draft format where that mattered, that'd be one thing. But we are not. So we'll go ahead and finish up that pack. So we're on to our actual Ixalan proper pack. And we have a lot of work to do in this deck. So now before we get into the pack, uh, we have... Very few vampires in what was originally intended to be a vampire deck. So we really would like to see a decent vampire for our very exciting Forerunner of the Legion. So we'd really like to see that. I'm not hating dinosaurs because we've managed to pick up some dinosaurs that actually work pretty well 
in tandem with one another. And we have some low pick dinosaurs as well. Um, we only have 19 cards, really, that we're seriously considering playing. I'd like to chop a couple, even if I could. So this pack, this Ixalan proper pack, has to really do a lot of heavy lifting for us. We have Steadfast Armasaur. Uh, it's pretty good. So it's blocking or blocked by it. It's not great. It's an okay rate in this format. The Death Gorge Scavenger is quite a decent rare. We have the Paladin of the Bloodstained, which I like because it creates multiple bodies. Uh, one of which is a vampire with lifelink, so that helps with our famished paladin. It's also not a bad one to search up, so we're going to go ahead and grab that out of the pack. Um, we got a Sky March Bloodletter, which is a pretty good hit for us. Outside of that, it would really just be yet another Raptor Companion, and that would put us up to three, and that's not really where I want to be. Um, this pack's got a repeating barrage in it. It's got um, Pirate's Prize is okay. Uh, River Herald's Boon's quite good. So, not really a really powerful pack, but it had a decent role player for us. In this pack, there's a Deathless Ancient, which lets us bring this card back. So, I'm going to pick that up and hope to keep rolling with the Vampires. Because we've done okay so far. It looks like we may have whiffed here, though. Yeah, unfortunately. So, the Ruthless Knave is a decent pickup. It comes down on a spot on our curve. I'm going to change views again. That's a little underrepresented. So I think that's a good choice. Our four drop is definitely a little glutted. I'd like to avoid picking up fours going forward. So I think the Ruthless Knave is the pick over uh, Hoarder or Blightkeeper or the Dreadnought. So I'm going to go ahead and grab up a Ruthless Knave. Uh, Skittering Heartstopper I definitely don't mind having one of. It's kind of a good roadblock, and it does decent work. Again, nothing in white. White looks, seems to be picked over pretty hard. All right, we got a Queen's Commission, which is a nice one. Um, let's see here. Argyle's Bloodfast. We may actually be able to play that because we have a decent amount of life gain in our deck. It's not too bad. It's not lighting the world on fire by any stretch. It may just be better to take this Pterodon Knight. Though granted it's a human, and so it's not really doing too much unless we get a dinosaur down. And again, I'd like to avoid 4 drops, so I'm just going to grab Argyle's Bloodfast and see if we can play it. Um, nice, couple nice late pickups here. Unfortunately, they're in the same pack. Queen's Agent I don't hate. But I also don't love. And the Skyblade of the Legion is pretty darn good. So I'm going to snatch up one of those. Um, Skullduggery I like a lot. Interlopers on the 4-drop, which again is pretty glutted. I'm switching views. So our 4-drop has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 cards on it. So again, that's a little heavy for us. I mean, our 2-drop is definitely our strongest drop as far as uh, amount of cards. Maybe we need the Interloper to help close out a game because we don't... I mean, we have some evasion and some decent stuff. So maybe the Skull... I mean, Skullduggery is an okay trick, but eh, it's it's not bad. We're at 27 cards right now, so we actually are in the market for cutting some, which is really nice. The question is, would the Skullduggery make it versus the Interloper? I'm going to take the Interloper. Though I wish I... You know, I'm sure at some point I'm going to wish I had picked up a Skullduggery. We have a Ritual of Rejuvenation for our board. Uh, Blightkeeper playable but not really in the deck we're playing um, there's Duress but I'm going to grab the Blightkeeper just in case and the Blightkeeper just in case uh, two dinosaur cards not really for us because they are also green dinosaur cards okay so we have a deck and I apologize again you can't not have this giant set I wish the deck was up here and the cards we had extra were down here to make things a little easier to look at but I am sorry for that. So we could definitely drop a Snubhorn and maybe even be able to drop two because we have the Heart Stopper on one, which is a little bit better. Vanish Pod and Raptor Companion. Might be able to drop a Sun Sentinel. It's pretty medium, but having bodies is pretty important to me. <laughs> so our three drops all look pretty good. Like, I don't see any reason to drop any of those. Helioptorus is, again, kind of medium, but could be a pretty swingy card. Although it's not looking that great. We're down to one, one Snubhorn if we keep one. We have two, so that's three. Um, three. Four dinosaurs. Yeah, not really doing too much for us, I don't think. We're, otherwise, it's just a 2-2 two, two flyer for four, which is not really a great rate for us. So let's go ahead and drop that. Uh, let's see where we're at. 
43 cards. Okay, we can definitely drop another Snubhorn Sentry then. Um, let's see. Sun Sentinel can probably go. So you do have one, two, three, four creatures on the two drop. Hmm, that's not a whole lot. One, two, three. We'll call it honorary four. One, three, four. One, one. Yeah, our creature count is not ridiculously high. We're talking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Honorary ten. Eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Not negligible, but not spectacular. We're really hoping, and this is why Argos seems okay in our deck, because we have a lot of removal effects. We're really hoping to basically run our removal pretty hard at our opponent and hoping that we can get by with these creatures that are not big but hit hard. We're in like the market of like three ones with evasion, or three ones early, hoping to get in a few hits just to kind of like allow our our removal to clean some stuff up. So we need to cut one more card out of this deck. And it's a tough one. Definitely a tough drop. I want to try to keep a reasonable amount of vampires and if I can. Because we do have the Deathless Ancient, so cutting vampires seems really bad when we can use them to not only beat down but recur a creature. And sadly, it's like our best creature. So. We have to find a cut somewhere. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, we're fairly aggressive, but not ridiculously aggressive. So maybe we just take out the Grasping Scoundrel. It takes a little bit of pressure off of our mana base. Yeah, cause I don't want a ton of things we're trying to drop at one either. So we have a decent way to go up, and we're just trying to get ahead with, you know, decent removal. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 black sources. Versus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11 white sources. So we're exactly divided in colors. We want to hit white early, more so than we necessarily want to hit black, but both are fairly important. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this. Whoops. I wanted to add a white. And drop a black. And we'll call that a deck. So let's hope that this uh, black-white vampires deck can get us a little farther than we got previously with our four-color pile. I don't know. It's going to be a tight one because this deck is not... Like, if I were grading it, I'd call it maybe like a C plus, B minus. Like, I think it's capable of striking in the 4-5 to five win range, but I don't know if it can go all the way. Maybe it'll play out a little nicer than I think it looks, but it's overall a pretty medium deck. So, playing against a Surly Sasquatch at the moment. And they get to go first. So, we'll see how things go. And again, if you're uh, checking out this video, obviously you found us somewhere on the internet. We have tons more content if you like MTG content. I definitely implore you to check out uh, pop-up video that's our paper pauper content we've really tried super hard to make that fantastic uh, episode two is going to come out uh, end of july early august somewhere in there we're trying to release it quarterly so we're hoping that uh, that's a good one and that should be a lot of fun the first one's really good and we're hoping to improve on a lot of suggestions we got from viewers so Give that a watch, especially the first episode, and if you have any suggestions, pop them in there because I'm going to be working on editing that for a while because they take a long time to edit. So let us know any suggestions in the bottom of that video, and we'll work on it for the second one, but it's really one of our nicest produced videos on the game side. So for our opening hand, we have two planes, a famous paladin, a raptor companion, a raptor companion, <laughs> a divine verdict, and a paladin of the bloodstained. So it's a keeper. It's kind of a, a begrudging keep, but it's not bad. We have no way to gain life until the paladin of the uh, bloodstained comes down so i may depending on what they play i may lead on a raptor companion but if they play some kind of a two butt i may just drop the famished paladin to brick wall them so it looks like we're playing against pirates so our main concern is going to be evasion definitely we'll play a famous paladin on uh staring down a wanted scoundrel the raptor companion is good but a little easier to take out Moment of Craving, things like that, can definitely take it out where they'd have to do that in combat to take out our Framus Paladin. 
I'm 100% interested in destroying the scoundrels because obviously we get treasure when they do that. Or when we do that. When it dies. So they're swinging it. Obviously they have a, some kind of a combat trick. But we're going to block it and hope that the, the combat trick takes up their turn. Okay. Moment of craving as predicted. See The, the nice thing is we get a block here where if we play the raptor companion they would have just removed it and attacked. And they did not make a land drop. Which is an important thing to note. So Forerunner of the Legion actually stacks up pretty poorly here. So we're just going to play another Raptor Companion. We have one of our better vampires uh, with the Paladin of the Bloodstain and our best vampire in the Deathless Ancient in our hand. So Forerunnering would just be for like a 3-1 flyer, and that might be good to close this game out. But for now, we're, our main concern is this Wanted Scoundrels. We want to make sure that this roadblock... We want to make sure we roadblock this thing as many times as we can so they cannot swing it at us. Because this can close out a game very fast. Like, you know, our opponent kept what seemed to be a good hand. Two lands plus the Scoundrels is 100% a keep all the time. But they're not able to make their... They weren't able to make their third turn land drop, so... But it's still a good hand because this card is just so stinking good. The drawback seems like a drawback, but it's just at any point in the game, it's a 4-3. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, see? Moment of craving again out of our opponent. So they get to bop us for four. All right. What's nice here is I get to play the Paladin of the Bloodstain. So if they destroy the Paladin, I get the 1-1 one, one token. <laughs> so I can at least... If I can't block it for value, I can at least chump block it. So they have that going for us. But you can see how powerful these Moment of Cravings truly are. So now I think we've managed to brick wall them finally. So we can actually attempt to develop our game plan a little bit. So I think the plan's going to be uh, Raptor Companion and a Forerunner of the Legion. Yes, I would like to search my library for a vampire card. Because we definitely want to start getting at them in the air. So let's go ahead and take... Because e even if we get the Sky March Blood Letter, we only have two mana up. So the uh, Vampire Revenant is definitely a more reasonable option because it's going to use our mana in the same way because we don't have a two mana trick in our hands so it's a fine vampire to start beating down oh boy oh boy so now because we got a flying vampire <laughs> we're going to have to telegraph that we have a combat trick We're going to attack with just the Raptor Companion. If they block with the Castaways, so be it. The Castaways is kind of a defender in this format, so... We're going to Divine Verdict the Wanted Scoundrel. We're kind of telegraphing it pretty hard, because we got a 4-drop and then just did not... It was a 4-drop flyer, literally, that could block it, and we're just simply not casting it. So, like, we're either bluffing or we have something for real. So, we'll see. If they have, like, a spell pierce or something, we lose. We don't lose, but we're in bad shape. <laughs> All right. All right, we dodge bullet one. So that's pretty good. Now we got to try to uh, close out this game. Let's hope we've run, our, we've run our opponent pretty low on resources. What I would not want to see is something like a, uh, a card draw spell. Or something like that. Okay. Siren Reaver is fine. We will play out... Let's go ahead and run out the Deathless Ancient. Alright, oh, I just needed to pay the treasure, yeah. I'm gonna, of course I'm going to use the treasure. Oh. Um token because the reason for the token pump is i can kind of just carelessly swing it and not really care i don't think our opponent's going to block it and it gains me two life so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to attack with the token and the forerunner of the, the legion continuing to pump our stuff will gain us a little bit of life back so hopefully we can uh 
and kind of hold the game. I can't imagine they're considering even wasting a card on this. We'll end the turn there. No reason to drop our Skittering Heartstopper at the moment. We wouldn't have a mana to activate it with. And just in case there's some kind of a, a sweeper or an extra one or something, I'd prefer to hold it back and be able to cast two spells on the next turn. Our opponent, a lot of in the air. I keep thinking about the sideboard, and I then I keep remembering, oh yeah, there's no sideboard. <laughs> it's a problem. Okay, so we need to present some kind of a threat. I'm thinking the I think we're going to cast the Vampire Revenant, and then attack with the Paladin of the Bloodstained, which is not great, because either the creatures can pick it off, but I'd rather get a flyer out of the way. Uh, maybe I'll pump the token and then just swing both. No, I can't do that, because then the 3-3 three, three just eats the 2-2. Two, two. I'm just going to swing with the 3-2. Should have thought that out a little better. Granted, either way I'm kind of wasting a pump, but that could have been an extra point of damage if they just choose not to block. So we'll see. But that probably could have been a little bit better rationalized. No, probably. It could have been. Just straight up. Put it really in the tank here. Is there a Skullduggery or something? Okay, just contemplating blocks. Now I will drop the Heart Stopper because I have an extra black mana. Not that I think they're going to drop a Haste Threat, but <laughs> at least I have something. And this is kind of all our cards are on the table. We have to kind of, from here, top deck. But we have plenty of removal. We have an Impale. We have a Luminous Bonds. Oh, thank God they don't have the City's Blessing. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, who's... Kind of just stuck attacking with the Paladin. We can get the Heart Stopper in for an extra whopping one point of damage. But any port in a storm, really. We are kind of in desperation mode trying to push past our opponent's evasive creatures. Our wall of, of air creatures is so fragile because we're predominantly a ground-based attacking deck. So this is a pretty tight rope we're walking because one removal spell... And we're in trouble. Whenever an opponent discards a card, that player loses two life. Uh, okay. So maybe they're, that's going to incentivize an attack, which seems really stupid. Okay. Again, attack with two things. And this time we'll play out a land in an alt sort to kind of make their raiders wake a little bit of a moot point. Land, Altasaur. Despite the fact its name is Altasaur, it does not have reach. But the 3 4 can attack. Now it's a little tougher because of the Fathom, Fathom Fleet border. Is this not a pirate? Okay, it's a pirate. I was going to say, do they lose life here? <laughs> that seems weird. So I think most of the sirens are pirates, so. Ooh, good one. Got the Impale. We are certainly going to snap that off. It's going to be on the Wind Strider. We're going to attack. Now that they have a ground creature, I'm a little less uh, excited about swinging in the Heart Stopper when I can use it on the D. And... Those are going to be our two attackers. Paladin can get blocked by Fathom Fleet. They trade. That's fine with me. And at this point, it's done a lot of work for us. It's been the hardest... As far as damage, it's represented the most damage of any card, so... Going for the Altasaur? Double block on the Altasaur? Yeah, so 100% want to damage the Reaver first. Interesting. They just, they almost gave up, they, like, if they don't have something pretty severe, they've given up the game with that double block. That was a really greedy double block. Like, I thought, yeah, I thought for sure it was just going to be block the Paladin of the Bloodstained and then just take the the hit from the Altasaur for now. Granted, their life total was getting low. We were pressuring pretty good. 
Oh, I thought that just sped up the animation. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut it off before we saw what rank we went up or stayed at. Okay, so that's one in the books. Look pretty good there. Again, really reliant. You can see how important removal is in this format. Because once we hit our impale, the game ended on the spot. So, well, granted, there was a bit of an odd block, but... I can't say much. I've gotten tunnel vision like that before on recording on stream. You're worried about trying to keep board advantage, and then you realize, like, oh, yeah, they have, like, four or five things out. I have one. I need to manage that, too, not just making the best block possible in terms of value. Sometimes you need to just make a bad block. Like, that's just the way it works. So we're on the play. We have two drop, uh, two drop, two drop, three drop, four drop. Fantastic hand. Both are colors. This is kind of the hands we signed up for. A little sad we don't have a removal spell here. I'd love to trade off the Skyblade of the Legion for a removal spell. But, you know. Getting good hellos here. I love it. Practically imperfect. Let's go ahead and lead off with the companion in case they don't have it. They stumble on a two drop. We get a nice meaty hit in for three. I like that. Skyblade's a little bit more of a medium hit. Where, I mean, the advantage is we could have we could have forerunner to pump, that kind of thing. So we do get a little bit brick walled here. So let's go ahead and play the Skyblade. It's a poor mana efficiency play, but it lines up really nicely against their Martyr of Dusk. Of all the creatures in our hand, it lines up the nicest. Because the Martyr can't trade for it, but it takes the Martyr out of combat. So it's a pretty nice creature actually for us. Even the 3-2 Ruthless Knave still stacks up poorly against this card, which is very good in this format, by the way. Because it leaves a 1-1 one, a one, one token behind, it can essentially, like, it could take out one of our creatures, one of these, the Forerunner or the Ruthless Knave, and still leave a guy behind, so. I mean, clearly this are, they, are, they have a combat trick or a removal spell, but again, I don't mind trading off a 2-mana cost thing for a removal spell. Like, that's totally fine. They were like, okay, you spent a moment of craving on a 1-3 flyer. Like, bully. Bully for you. So now we're in a bit of a tight spot as far as finding good stuff. I kind of want to hold the Forerunner. I'm interested in the, the Revenant because we can get into a racing situation a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to turn this into a pure race. Where if they want to hit us with the Martyr, there's a bit of a cost for that. Because now I get in for three and I get to play another creature. If they want to swing to try to get me to block with the Revenant, there's no way I'm doing that. I'm going to swing for six if they don't have a follow-up creature. If we top deck a removal spell for the creature, then we're in crazy good shape. Alright. Our opponent's got a better vampire deck than we do. We're definitely not blocking this, by the way. It's going to read mostly like 3-2 unblockable for the vast majority of the game. So, we're going to attack with our Vampire Revenant. And we want to leave pretty desperately two mana up, so I'm going to go ahead and... Ugh, all these seem pretty bad. I'm going to Ruthless Knave, because I still would like to get my six mana before I go looking for a Deathless Ancient, which is most assuredly the card I want. So... We'll try to make this work. We'll see what they uh, they end up doing in combat. So I'm sure they're going to combat. No reason not to here, especially at least with the the Martyr of Dusk. So I could see a world where they attack with both. I'll take three again. See what we can do. I don't mind taking a hit for three here because the moment of craving is going to make it two. Like, as far as net loss of life. And if I can get an untapped creature out of my way, so be it. Fathom Fleet Cutthroat enters the battlefield target. Okay. Unfortunately, their wall of 3-3 three, three creatures is going to hold us back nicely, so... Okay. Dire Fleet's kind of bad if we don't hit a land off the Explorer. If we do, we're geniuses. If not, we're, like, in big trouble. But I still think it's the right play. Okay. Play our land, and now we get the ability to go in for our Deathless Agent. Okay. 
So we have the Interloper. We also have the Ruthless Knave, which can eventually get going, but it's like, it's pretty darn slow. But now I think it's time we trade off our Raptor Companion. Let's see, if they, go, if they go to Pump, obviously I can Moment of Craving it and just make them lose a card. So, it could be a bit of a blowout. The nice thing, I mean, the nice thing for them is they still get something left behind after this happens. So we'll see if they have another vampire zeal or another moment or something like that. Okay, they're just gonna sack it. Not great for us, but not the worst thing. All right. Let's go ahead and Forerunner. I guess I do want to find a Vampire card. I'd like to find this gigantic Vampire. And we'll continue to smash into him with the Deathless Ancient. And we'll drop our land. Just in case of uh, any shenanigans. After this, probably won't play any lands, but you never know if like a Raider's Wake or something's going to come out. Maybe, I mean, even an arterial... I mean, something, you know, that they're going to play. But we'll see what they got. Our opponent definitely has missed a lot of land drops. So I imagine they have some higher impact spells, but haven't really managed to get them. But I'm just hoping whatever it is is an evasive, because this Vampire Revenant's really winning the game for us. Golden Demise. That wipes our board. So let's see if there's anything we can do. We can definitely sacrifice a creature to create two treasures. So that, we got that going on. So I only get in for two here, and the Deathless Ancient will kind of bring the board back to parity, but that was a nice one. But they needed to do something because the board was pretty well locked up and I was getting them in the air. So they have a lot of a, a chance now, a pretty large chance to take over the game. I'm pretty much prized into blocking here no matter what. Because I have to try to do something. But, I mean, you know, if they're on mono combat tricks, they're on mono combat tricks. There's only, you know, so many that are generally worth running. But, I mean, both of our opponents so far have been on multiple Moment of Cravings. So we need a decent rip here. Dusky Z. Not a great follow-up, but a follow-up nonetheless. I would have preferred them to just pass the turn. We definitely need something. They draw land. Nice. Raptor Companion, not precisely what we're looking for, but it kills something in combat. But the problem is our opponent's got five cards in hand to our none. So this is not in our hand, this is in our graveyard. So we're in big trouble. Any removal spell kills a raptor companion. It's all pretty bad. So at this point they're just going to swing away because, I mean, a one-for-one -one trade's pretty good. And at this point we need uh, them to not have any follow-ups. And... We don't have any extra ones in our deck, so... And I don't know if there's a creature that gets us out of this. The Paladin's pretty good, because it puts spits out a token, so it gives us a chance, but not really. <laughs> Swamp certainly doesn't do it, so... Lose to yet another X for one. I mean, Golden Demise is a hell of a magic card, so... It certainly happens. Let's see how far we drop down in the world of Silver Tier 1. Can't break into that gold. That sweet, sweet gold. Let's see what else we got. Going on next round. Yeah, just Golden Demise is really rough. And our board there was pretty fragile in terms of toughness. So, really rough. And both of our opponents were on uh, black, black both games. They had a black blue and then a black white. So, Moment of Craving certainly underdrafted, it seems, because... Both of our opponents had multiple. Now, we have three. We've seen one, I think. P 
per game? Or have we just seen one one so far total? And again, our deck's main plan is to trade one for one for removal because we have so darn much of it. Like, we haven't seen a Luminous Bond yet. We've seen an Impale, but, like, not much else other than that. Like, it's been pretty bad. So, so far, so bad in terms of drawing removal. We have quite a decent amount of it. And it has not drawn up to that, to prove that. Red, green, probably eventually dinosaurs. We will certainly play a raptor companion. What does this do? Whatever. Okay, so it trades no matter what with our raptor companion. And we have to follow up with a queen's commission. And then we have to follow up, depending on how things go, beyond that. Wayward sword tooth. Um, four, five, six. I mean, there's so there's something to be said for keeping their board clear. There's something to be said for trying to get in damage. So I'm not going to block here because the Wayward Sword Tooth is not turned on yet. But only having one Forerunner, we've drawn it every game nearly on time. So let's combat. And we'll Queen's Commission because, again, right this minute. I don't necessarily want to go looking for a vampire when I'm a little late on land. Again, our vampire speed isn't very robust. It's just kind of stuff. So again, we get domed by people dealing a bunch of damage in small increments across a large swath of things. So that's not great. We can definitely see a little bit of a hole in our plan. And that is uh, low toughness. So let's go ahead and interloper. Okay. Second black source is not, like, super upsetting, but not super great either. We can't block the deep root warrior because it gets plus one, plus one. And we've kind of knocked ourselves out of any type of race. Okay. It blocks for that. This could do with less land, please. Hmm. Alright, so it's just trample as long as you control another dinosaur. Impales a sorcery, which is a little bit annoying. So we would trade a whole turn off for that. Forerunner, we could grab our big fat vampire. Which is kind of nice, but at least it's with no mana to recover. So I'd rather make a more mana efficient play. Like impaling. The sword tooth just does nothing right now. Where impaling this is not a bad deal. Let's get this off the board. It also keeps them away from City's Blessing, so... I don't mind that. The Sword Tooth is not a problem until it's a problem, so... We're still behind in the race, and they're certainly going to have better hits. Let's see what this thing does. That thing is big. So the problem is that thing has Trample. Trample is a problem. So, let's play this, let's play this. I think we're just, again, Deathless Ancient. Big old 4-4. Four, four. Um, no attacks, because I'd rather double block it with our Vampire of the Legion and the Dire Fleet Interloper to try to get it off the battlefield. This being the Tuscadon. And... I'd rather not give up my flyer because their creatures are going to become way bigger than ours way fast. So we need something to do. Forerunner, oh, the Empire. That's very bad for us, especially if they have two cheap dinosaurs. They can ding all of our stuff to death while only losing one thing on their board. So a lot of must-answer threats, and we have a vampire sitting on top of our deck. So we're in bad shape. Yet again. <laughs> Just can I, I guess we build a shabby deck yet again? Though it looked good, I thought the curve was decent. As I said, C plus, B minus, like not great, but above average. 
for this particular set, but clearly not. We're just behind the curve constantly. Like, we can't take this. Whenever it deal, If it would deal combat damage, it deals double. Like, that's just absurd. Like, we definitely can't do that. <laughs> I don't know what our opponent's contemplating. This is an easy attack. Okay. You got one thing off the board. I'm not really sure. Oh, they got City's Blessing in that move. Yeah, I think we lose this one. So I don't think there's much we can do here. Like, we have two very expensive vampires in our hand. So we play this. They play the Suncrown Raptors and deal three to us to drop us to three. There's just nothing we can do here. Man, this deck, I guess, sucks. I mean, maybe it's a F? I don't know. It's real, real bad. I guess. <laughs> It seemed pretty good to me, but we just can't draw any of our removal spells. Again, we have quite a few. And we cannot draw them. We have drawn Stone Cold... Like, we've drawn... We drew a... An Impale of one for one on Impales. But we have three Moment of Cravings. We have seen one Moment of Craving across three games. Three! It's a draft deck! It's 40 cards. Like, we haven't seen our Luminous Bonds at all. That was our pack one, pick one. We have not seen that card in our deck. Like, yeesh. There's finally a moment of craving, like, a mix of creatures and removal. Maybe we can actually do something this game. Yeesh. Let's hope. Just can't believe how bad these hands have looked. Like, I thought they were okay curves. We get a giant creature. Okay, our giant creature's real bad. Apparently. So, we'll see how it goes. Got the quick hello back. I like that. Famous Paladin's nice on two here because we can crack in and then Sky March Bloodletter gains us a life so it gets to untap. The sick stuff. The curve stuff. Another removal spell. Three removal spells. It's like we drafted a ton of removal spells. Well, that guy's annoying. 100% are not blocking. But we'll Sky March. We're going to stick to the plan. I will deal with the Awakening Sun's Avatar if need be. Need does not be at the moment. Sailor of Means. He comes for your memes. See, well, that's why that card's so good, because it's going to stonewall our Famished Paladin. That's pretty nuts. So I think, sadly, we're going to have to impale it and come in for five. At this point, I just want to, as evidenced by our previous games, I want to just move in quickly. Like, I do not want to fart around. Really? Spell Pierce off the treasure. Wow. Going deep. I mean, they're not stopping the onslaught. And they're not revealing a dinosaur, thank God. So see what their follow-up is. Another Sailor of Means. What? They must have. They had to have drawn. There's no way they would have spell pierced that. Right? Unless our opponent's actually insane. Alright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Black Black. I'm going to get rid of this Wakening, or Priest of the Awakening Sun. Before it gets to be where it actually matters. And also I just don't want it to gain them incidental life. Play the Raptor Companion. Alright, they are on at least three colors. Sailor of Means can do anything. He has means. Resplendent Griffin. So three. Holy crap! Our opponent is on Mono Sailor of Means. Okay. Let's go ahead and get this Resplendent Griffin out of the way. Yep, 
we just got to kind of keep drilling them down. I mean, it's winning five swings is going to be nigh impossible. But we have to hope to maybe draw some action in the meantime. Sadly, we've had to race. So, I mean, the Respondent Griffin is a respectable target. But the Awakening Suns and a Spell Pierce <laughs> is not great. Okay. Bouncing it back to our hands really not going to do that much. It triggers when it comes in and loses life. It's keeping us off playing two spells in a turn, but okay. I mean, it's still dealing half of its damage. Yuck. That's going to be annoying. This is targets. I'm going to attack, obviously. I will trade off the Soul of the Rapids for the Sky March Blood Letter. And then I'll cast the Vampire Revenant. Get rid of the uh, the Flying Blocker to play more damage in the air. Okay. Probably a Raid card here. Nope. Play a Queen's Commission out. And Bant, they're definitely not going to uh, destroy all of our creatures, I don't think. We'll hold the other one in case they do something to this one. They're kind of forced to try to find something to deal with this card. Water not. See? Let's go ahead and play Vampire Revenant. Planes. One thing I can do, if I had a fourth mana, I would, but I don't think it's worth swinging in all these creatures simply to have them get like try to sneak one damage through. Like That seems kind of weak to me. All right. Managed to get there. Back on the Silver Tier 1 train. For the second. Let's hope we keep going. Two wins in the pocket. I'd like to get a couple more wins. We'll see. See if I can do it. See if I do it. Let's hope. Dire Wolf Blades. It's a name. I mean, it sounds like a bad anime name, but it's a name. Dire Wolf Blade. When I equip my creature with Dire Wolf Blade. Plus two, plus two, and Snarl Slobber. Oh... Three drop, four drop, two pieces of removal. Not the most aggressive hand we could have, but still decent. What do we got? Snubhorn? Snubhorn! Toot, toot, got a snubhorn. Alright, got it, got it. Keeping good on the hellos. I love that. What the? Why would you keep that? Okay, this is going to take over the game. What are you doing? Out there in listener land, I understand this, this person probably has like a, a pretty sick curve in their hand. But no, you do not do this. If they don't have a follow-up, I'm going to be able to start pinging them and like using the Argos Bloodfast to draw a million cards. They better have a two-drop. Or they kept that hand for zero reason. Snubhorn Century is not a reason to keep a hand. Okay, they're trying to get cute with their Snubhorn Century. Alright. So. I'm going to hold back my Vampire Tokens. If they get cute and attack, I will Divine Verdict the Snubhorn Century. If they um, don't do anything, I can double Argos Bloodfast. So we'll see how they choose to move. Choose to do nothing. But we will 
gladly draw back up to seven cards. Nice. Okay. The problem is nothing matches up too well right now. Um, let's throw this down. Because I can block and it'll live. They have a essence scatter? They waited on that vampire argument for a while. Sailor means. It was just like last game. <laughs> Opponent playing very cautiously. I'm not afraid to throw Sarunks so they don't block. Like it's kind of like I can treat it like I punk them out. If they block, I throw them over the triumph and play a second revenant, and that puts them pretty far behind in the air. They could have a trick and play it out, play it with the treasure, but I'm willing to take that gamble. Nice. I have to do something. <laughs> so, and unfortunately, despite the ogre's blood fast drawing his cards, we're a little stuck on land right now. So we can't really play two spells, but we'll try our best. Try our best to evaluate and get through it. We'll see. Worst comes to worst, we lose. No big deal. Already lost twice, so who cares? <laughs> see what they got. Yeah, attack away, buddy. Okay, that's a little suspect. I'm going to attack first, because if what they're holding is Spell Pierce, oops, I want to be able to play around that. And I also it also gives me a 5-3, which is kind of nice. And I also have a Moment of Craving for backup. And a Divine Verdict for backup. This is kind of gross. I don't know if they'll be playing around two combat tricks. Start off with the cheapest one first. Try to bait the counter that way. Sea Legs on their own creature? If it's a pirate? It's a dinosaur. I don't know what that was. Yeah, damage is good. Yeah, that was a mighty oops, my friend. That was a mighty oops. We'll follow up with Pound in a Bloodstained and question everything we know. Holy crap. That was, yeah, that was a mighty oops. Enchant creature. Pay one, target a creature. That's not that hard. Interesting, they held up all that mana for a sea legs? Yeah, I don't know what they were up to. Opponent, a lot of sketchy decisions. <laughs> Obviously not a very high rank, but only went up very little, so their match win percentage is quite low. Because that's how it works. The better opponent you get, the more reward you get for beating them, which I love, by the way. It was not like that before this newest update. It was just, if you beat somebody, you went up a little bit. If you lost somebody, you went down a little bit. Where this is, if you beat somebody who's a great, like, way bad, like, this person looks to be a bronze somewhere and we're a silver so if we beat them we won't go up much where if they were a gold or something a high gold or even a diamond and we did manage to win we would get a ton of boost to our uh, rank because we were beating somebody so much higher ranked than us our opponent will do pretty well too i don't know what rank they are in bronze and again, I'm assuming that's bronze. So our opponent goes first. Three lands. We can cast one of the spells in it. And we're one land away from casting another. Swamp away from doing it. It just feels like one of those hands you can't mulligan. 
in limited mulliganing is such a punishment in limited even with the scry it makes things a little easier but it's still not spectacular and famous paladin's kind of an early brick wall so i don't mind it too much but we'll see what we can pull out mist cloaked harold So I'm going to miscloak Harold against the Queen's Commission. The black is weird. I mean, are they all on pants on the miscloaked Harold? I don't know if that's their game or what, but we'll find out. We certainly need some black mana. Just attacked with it. Jim Henson. This looks like Jim Henson to me. Um... Let's throw out the Queen's Commish. We'll worry about Moment of Craving on our next turn. We're going to get hit for four, or three here, rather. Because I'm assuming the opponent's trying to just bash us in pretty hard. But again, Moment of Craving really shines in a game like this because we can catch our opponent with our pants down. It's not too bad. It's good. Good card. Good deck. It's a good deck. All right, that was unfortunately not a swamp. So we're going to have to take up our whole turn to do this move. So we're going to have a moment of craving. The Storm, Sple Storm Fleet Spy. And we really want to swing that race back in our favor, so... That kind of hit. As you can see, now the game is 15 to 20 all of a sudden. And it puts our opponent in their racing, primary racing plan is very poor here. They're sticking with it, but it's very poor here. Let's see what we can do. Tap in mana. Playing a Spire Winder. We'll swing in the Famish Paladin. And then we'll play the Sky March Blood Letter. Which again, we're stalled for black mana, so we can't play two spells in a turn. But we can keep on tapping our Famish Paladin, which is good. It ain't nothing. So we'll see if the opponent's still interested in racing, or if they're going to back off and try to play defense. Our opponent's game in the air is quite good. Uh, the Spirewinder can be pretty nasty, as we talked about in the draft. can turn up to a 3-4, which is pretty hard to tangle with in the air. Can't go for a what or not. What or not. Still sticking with the race. If they have a follow-up, I don't hate this. Oops. Their follow-up is oops. I don't know the oops. I don't get it. Oh, because they could have committed to City Blessing and lost themselves. A damage there. Got ya. Alright, so where are we at in life? The problem is we can't do any, like pretty much anything, and they're still getting us in the air, unfortunately. So we need to figure out a plan, which is probably step one dealing with a Spire Winder, but we can't cast the Bloodfast and the Divine Verdict in the same turn, so we're losing a whole turn to do that. The Famished Paladin could crash in. They're going to 100% block it with the Fathom Fleet Border, however. But I don't know if that's not the worst thing in the world. So, we're in a little bit of a precarious situation here. I really don't want to take another gnarly hit in the air for that much. So, I think I'm just going to sacrifice our Famished Paladin. I'm going to send two attackers, because the little vampires give us life. It gives him a decent block if he just wants the block on the vampire. I'm fine with that. It lets me smack him for 8 and then untap the Famished Paladin so that the, the Dire Fleet Border cannot get into combat. And I can take out the Spire Winder if I can right-click on it ever. Yeah, it's just it's a Nilla other than 3-4. Impale. Okay. Let's get the Spire Winder off the board. Take six. 
and our next biggest priority is this Kite Sail Corsair. So we will play our Altasaur and we will play our Argol's Bloodfast and we will swing for one. So see if we can get there, but it's going to be a tight one. It really kind of depends on what they rip. Ugh. I mean, no choice here. We're 100% blocking. Okay. Interesting. What are they up to? Just trying to bluff a combat trick. When you're as far behind as we are, bluffing a combat trick is not a stellar plan. Well. Should have swung both, because I can't block. Oh, stupid. I'm stupid. Sorry about that out there. I'm stupid. If we lose, it's my fault. Obvious. But that was dumb. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Guess I will transform it. I will draw a card. This just okay. Tap sack. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Maybe I, I just leave one back. Horse gets blocks on whatever it wants, but now I'm willing to begin the thing they did before, which was over attack, to put in these last couple points of damage, which we should have won the game right there, by the way. But we suck. I suck. You don't suck. You're better than me. Be better than me. Please be better than me. I'm making these mistakes so you don't have to. But what's nice is I can sack our Sky March Blood Letter here and survive. Black and blue generally don't have a lot of pump spells. So let's sack this blood letter that's not doing much for us. Yeah, what? I don't understand that horse attack, but okay. I don't really understand a lot of what was going on there. I mean, the, the Deathless Ancient had them dead to rights if they didn't have a removal spell, I guess. But a little bit of a sweat. A little bit of a sweat. We got there, though. I'm an idiot. Still an idiot. Don't forget about that. Okay. We have gotten four wins. So this is the important tiebreaker of can I get this win? And do better with a deck I've drafted than a deck that the chat drafted during a live stream. This is sad. I've played Possum Boy before. He's pretty good. So, let's see. Opponent goes first. Not necessarily a bad thing, not a good thing, but depends on our, the texture of our hand. Because our hand is capable of more controlling styles. Um, I'm cool with this. Give them the hello. We do that. Where I come from, we say hello because we're nice people. Every time I've gotten it back, which is nice. If we're going to lose it magic, at least we're losing to polite folk. All right. I like that. Uh, paladin it is. When I first saw this, it was spoiled in a different language, and people called it Thirsty Paladin. So I've just always thought of it as Thirsty Paladin because he drinks blood. He's thirsty. What this? Prevent all combat damage it would be dealt to. Okay. I'm going to commission here because it's just more mana efficient. This prevents all combat damage, so it's an easy double block scenario or just single block for no value. Early forerunner, no fourth land drop. For another four, okay, they're chaining four runners. I like that. Um. No real good attacks from our opponent. And no land drop yet, which is a little confusing. I guess they're just going to forerunner into forerunner into forerunner. It's an odd one. 
So let's go ahead and moment of craving the thing that's very annoying, maybe? I just feel like if we attack and we don't do that, it just easily, like, okay. You know what I mean? Like, that seems pretty bad. But I don't know if we're in a position where we necessarily want to do that. I don't know. It's all pretty bad. Play a Skyblade of the Legion, because at least I can break a stalemate. So we'll probably end up moment of craving this thing. Because it is stalling our board out. Uh, I don't see anything going to the thing that prevents combat damage. So. Is that cool? Let's see if they chain another Forerunner. They already have more Forerunners than us. They declined it? Interesting. Maybe they're just a mix of things that are white. Oh, man. Like, I have to do this. I want to get rid of this stupid champion, but... Like... We're walking right into this. Like, I can't pass that up. I'm only a human, you know? I'm only a man. I can only, you know what I mean, not... Like, I can't deny that kind of value. This thing's stupid and annoying, but... That kind of value, I just can't say no. Oh, they weren't mono-white. Okay. Shaper's a Sanctuary. This seems like an odd thing to play when you're behind on board. <laughs> and you got your finally got your green mana. I, uh, I don't really have anything in my hand. Like, this gets chump blocked by this thing and dies. This gets double blocked and potentially dies. It only trades for one and then I get in four damage. It's like such bad beats right now. I'm going to play this... The Argos Bloodfast and the Raptor Companion. I hope I can cobble something together off the Argos Bloodfast. Again, only one black mana source, even though we're a 9-8 build. So that's a little frustrating. But Swamp looks good. Anything but Plains looks good, basically. Hey, they have an Altasaur, too. That looks good. <laughs> this does not. I mean, we could try a very sketchy attack with all. And try to get the blowouts while our opponent is tapped out. I'm going to try to scare the crap out of our opponent. <laughs> Bare minimum, they just cringed a little bit. We'll see if they can set up some decent blocks and we can blow them out a little bit. Well, they know the easy block. Whoa! Yep, you get the trigger. But I also get your guy out of the way. And you just took a buttload of damage. And you only crack back for seven right now. And you can't even crack back with the tutus because of the paladin. He gets to untap it an, an, an enormous amount of times. Well, I didn't expect that attack to go that smoothly. I'm going to be perfectly candid with you. I thought for sure it was going to be like, maybe I can get the Altasaur out of combat. Like, you know, trick them, get them. They just went for the easy block and took the rest. It's 27 to 8 currently. But the board's a little stalled, but not ridiculously stalled. <laughs> I think I'm going to go ahead and play the Interloper. It could provide decent blocks or at least give us maybe a Swamp. Swamp, I wouldn't mind seeing here at all. Nice. Don't mind that at all. Jungle Delver growing. Yep. I mean, I don't mind. I have a skittering, skittering Heart Stopper in my hand. Stops anything on the ground. This fight, as the rest of our fights have been, is in the air. 
You can see them hovering over the Skyblade of the Legion. Like, this is a game where Argyle's Bloodfast is really going to be awesome. Especially if we can do it activated a couple times in a turn. Like, woof, what a good draw. Four creatures. I'm going to... I'm going to go for a Gambit here and attack with all of them. Because we did that last time we had a combat trick. No, it wasn't a combat trick. It was a moment of craving. But I don't think... I think they just are real close to dying here. Even if they come to one, I get to Sky March Bloodletter them to death. They have nothing with lifelink. So we just get to, like, chew through. They got to double block the interloper. It's got Menace. Illegal blocks. That's why it was a decent attack. Because we're going to get 4 5 damage through and put them to 1 after the Sky March Blood Letter comes down. So they got okay. Get a bunch of untaps from Famish Paladin. Just don't use a timeout on that. Okay. I'm not going to play the Skittering Heartstopper because it really doesn't do much. Okay. I think. I mean, our opponent's got to do a heck of a lot to live. They don't have to do a heck of a lot. They can gain some life and live. Good game. Good game. I don't know if that means they win, but I don't see how they do 29 to us. But I will give them the good game in return. Thank you, Possum Boy, for the good game. All right. That one block was really very, very overly conservative. We did it. Let's see if we can keep running it. Here's open. But you can see how key removal is in our deck. Like, I wasn't joking about how much we're relying on it to win a game. It is 100% pivotal that we have removal to win a game. If we do not, we are in huge trouble when it comes to a game like this. So we absolutely have to get a good mix of creatures and removal because our creatures are pretty poor, as you can see. Games where we didn't have removal, our creatures matched up really poorly against our opponent's creatures. So we really need that removal to put to punch through. Almost bagel. Let's look at everything bagel. It's an almost bagel. It's just, I don't even want to fathom what an almost bagel is, actually. Don't want to fathom that is at all. You know what I just noticed this late into the stream? That um, the screen is a little effed up and I didn't adjust where the game is. So it's a little shunted over my Superluminal Games logo. But I may just put it up anyway because I managed to beat the draft deck, the, uh, the chat draft deck. Alright, so our opponent goes first and this hand is pretty bad. This may be our first mulligan. We have a two drop, we have a four drop, and a six drop. We're missing drops. We're in on land. Like, we're fine. Like, it just feels like a pretty bad keep, but this is what I think a lot of pros would call a forced keep because it's got spells and it's got land, and we can cast two of our spells. So I think it's a keeper, but it feels awful. Like, this is a really bad keep. Like, it feels real bad. If we don't cobble some good draws out of this, we're going to lose this game badly. <laughs> so we'll see. First opponent on a mountain. See, so already, Fanatical Firebrand completely negates our two drop. So we are in big trouble. Give our opponent the old hello. We'll pass it on back. Pass it on back. Pass it on back. But yeah, you can see how poorly that Fanatical Firebrand lines up against a Raptor Companion. Like, just insta-trades. It's woof. 
As long as it's your turn. It's so weird. Tax is a 2-4. Just means he can get into the red zone, I guess. So. Oh, okay, got a very late hello. I like that. I'm going to play another planes and play a raptor. We don't need double black till 6, so. I'm not super worried about that. They may just firebrand hardy veteran in. Cause they, well, they don't even have to do that. They can just attack with both. They can just leave the firebrand back. They can swing just the hardy veteran because I ain't blocking it as a 2-4, that obscure 2-4 attacker. They don't need to waste the firebrand. They may. They are. Uh, I think they moved to combat without realizing they moved to combat. No blockers. Your board state's amazing against my Raptor Companion. You didn't need to do that. Okay. I, don't, I just don't see the need to be hasty with that effect when it's always there. I mean, I guess maybe while I'm tapped out, there's some merit to like, oh, they're tapped out, get them. But, I don't know. A little sketchy. We'll see. We'll see what we can cobble together here. We got a, we got a four drop. We need something. We got an explorer plus a draw step. Let's see. I mean, I'd take a two drop. Just some kind of spell would be great. Protean Raider? Oh, three colors, huh? Okay, interesting. They kept it on top. So I guess they're confident that they can, uh, they can cobble something together with it. Okay, interloper. Do my bidding. Always find the lands you are. Why don't you ever find spells and become a 3-3? Three, three? Well, they definitely don't have the blue source of the protein raider, but they have a giant dinosaur. Okay. No blocks. I don't see much of a reason to hold back. I'm just going to Divine Verdict the Armasaur. Okay. So we know they're... I don't know why you keep that Protein Raider on top. You just need to hit cards. Like, if I kill both of your creatures, you're kind of screwed. And now the race is pretty slanted heavily in my favor. Odd. But we'll play us a deathly, Deathless Ancient. Let's see what we can cobble together from there. Ixali's Keeper. Plus five, plus five, and Trample. Okay. I mean, that's a real deal. That gives that hardy veteran lethal. So five, six, seven. It costs eight to do. Five, six, seven. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Actually, something we have to think about. Uh, I'm attack with all here, because the double block is not free on the interloper. And I don't think they realize how valuable that Exali's keeper is. Okay, we dump them all. And they need a blue source to stay alive. That's why you do not keep, like, the, no. You don't do, that was a really bad keep on their part. They, I mean, they lose. There's nothing they can do. They're 100% dead here. Good game. Yeah, that was, that was a sketchy keep. I mean, I questioned that when they did it. Like, Protean Raider's a cool card, but you need spells you can cast. In this format, it's unforgiving. Look what we just did. Okay. So, you know what I realized, too? In addition to me effing up the the screen there. Oh, it's granted, it's cutting off the eyeball a little bit. That's not the worst. Um, the other thing I screwed up is I keep claiming the prize without clicking on the card. Which is a little stupid. 
So I'm gonna try not to do that again. I used to. I'm used to. It used to be when you clicked it, it would flip it, and then you clicked claim. You click claim, it would flip it. Click claim to, again to claim it. But now you actually have to click on the card, or else it just puts it away in the blind. I have no idea what we've been getting. But what are you gonna do? Just keep playing more magic. That's all we can do. But we'll see. But we'll see. And they did. They did. I can fix that while we're waiting. Whoa. Mid recording, fixing things. Noob. Not bad. Back to the game. <laughs> Finally, seen our luminous bonds. And it's our first mulligan of all the games so far. Our opponent's also mulligan, though. Chim Chim Monk. This is not great, but it's more acceptable than our previous hand. Uh, Skittering Heart Stopper is fine. Because we can turtle behind that for quite a little while. Hello there, opponent. Alright, got the hello back. I think we're 100% on hellos tonight, which is insane! All the cool kids are Dominaria drafting. This is 1500, and I still don't get that format entirely. It's brutal. Skyblade of the Legion. Matches up very well against our hand. This is a free attack, by the way. Because if they block with the Sky Blade of the Legion, we just kill it. We play a Raptor Companion. A reason to hold back the Sky hold back the Sky Blade of the Legion if they feel like trading. We'll see. That vampire could be very valuable depending on the synergy of their deck. Snubhorn Century. Well, you definitely can't attack with Skyblade here. Unless you, like, they're, like, just super telegraphing a moment, uh, a moment of craving. Okay. Again, a free attack with the Heartstopper. So 100% will not block it. And I have a moment of craving here if I need it. Granted, it's real bad against the two creatures they have out. <laughs> so, got that going for us. May turn into a combat trick. We'll see. Paladin of the Bloodstained. Good one. We will kill that at the end of the turn. Interesting. Okay. No one expects the Spanish Inquisition. Now the Heartstopper attack is not so free. I'm not too worried about what they have on the board. It's pretty anemic. I'd much rather get down this Argyle's blood fast. This will win us a game. Because right now the board's pretty stalled. The, the beats in the air are pretty anemic. Getting a little better. We still have a Divine Verdict, though. I definitely can't attack here. Besides, if they want to uh, Skyblade, they can. Other than that, they have no attack. So it knocks us down to 20. We go to 18 off the Blood Fast. I'm fine with that. See what they got other than that. Uh, yes, I would like to draw a card. Even at the cost of two life. If you're newer to magic and you're watching this, remember life is a resource. 
it is what keeps you alive, but just like anything else, you need to use it the best way you can. And in this case, right now our opponents almost vomited all of their resources onto the board. So we kind of know where we stand. We know what we need to win this game based on the way it stands. So using your life as a resource is absolutely a, te a technique that should be utilized as much as you can. You win the game at 1, you win the game at 20, you still win the game. There's no winning more or winning at a higher I won. A, I was at a higher life and I won. Like that still does not matter. Like this is not a game we're going to get blown out of the water with some kind of crazy like burn-esque spell. We're just going to slog through resources. And this gives us simply gives us more. It's not like they're presenting a ton of pressure here, right? Like, they're not doing anything too insane. Still no attacks. Because we still need this heart stopper on blocking duty. So, opponent drawing a lot of land. Us not drawing a lot of land. Flood often beats screw. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, another very conservative attack from the opponent. Allows us to use Argyle's Bloodfast. But you can see the work the Heartstopper's doing against that token. Like, they can't just free roll their attacks. Which is pretty darn nice. So I'm going to play the Temple Altasaur here. Um, yeah, I mean, no real explanation other than it just can attack. It can get double blocked. But if that's the case, that's kind of okay. If we wait for a combat trick, we're in even better shape or a removal spell. Um, I could attack with the Raptor Companion to take a double block off the board, potentially, or they just take the damage. Um, but, um, yeah, let's go ahead and attack with the Raptor Companion, because it's not doing much on this board. If it eats a token, it eats a token. Like, good on us. At this point, it's worth about half a card to me. Because what I don't want is when I attack with the all sword to be able to get double blocked. So if I can avoid that, I will. If I can, I can't. If they play a nice follow-up, that's fine. But they have to draw something. They're kind of they're kind of low on resources. Okay, good resource. Nice rare. Exile our guy. Pretty nice. They'll be able to get an attack with the Snubhorn if they wish. I will trade it with the Famished Paladin. Or whatever the combat trick is in their hand, or whatever. That's fine. I don't mind that. It allows us to uh, to play our Raptor Companion, and it actually means something. Right now, it means very little. I think this is going to kind of convey a combat trick, but maybe not. Maybe they're just happy to trade the Sentry. But, nope, got a moment of triumph. That's totally fine. Because it really doesn't make much headway other than the Moment of Triumph traded for the Famished Paladin, which is fine. We need to work through this stuff anyway. So 6 Bane could allow us to tap out for a, a Deathless Ancient on an empty board. That's pretty darn tempting. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Our opponent literally has to top deck removal, and it stonewalls every attack they have. And it allows us to get in one with the Heartstopper. Pretty cool. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards a card. Okay, so they get a Ruthless Knave. Fine with me. <laughs> it allows us to use our mana on the Argos Bloodfast, so... I'm totally fine with that. And their hand is totally stone... And their creatures are totally stonewalled by the Deathless Ancient, which is great. Because this Deathless Ancient can catch up very fast for the work the Skyblood has done... Or Skyblade has done on us. So, that's also great. I'm certain they'll take this attack, this damage. No reason to block here with the Skyblade. This guy flies. I'm 
Um, I will play this because it allows me to activate Argos twice after Skittering Heartstopper activation. I don't think it's going to come to that, but you never know. They may just decide eventually they have to work through the Skittering Heartstopper, but now I have a, black, a Raptor Companion block. So I just don't think they can afford it. Let's see if I can draw some stuff. So far, no. Okay, that's a spell. That plays. That's a spell. That plays. Uh, yes, I will do that. We want a probably a Sky March Blood Letter. Maybe not. Yeah, maybe. A vampire Revenant, and we will pump the Deathless Ancient. And unfortunately, I auto tapped, so I don't have the ability to hold up the Skittering Heart Stopper anymore. Okay, just simply knock that out of the way. I'm totally fine with that. But I do get a block with the Raptor Companion if need be. Axis of Mortality. You may have two target players. I mean, that doesn't do actual anything here. All I have to do is kind of... Four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, it doesn't do a whole lot. I mean, with the Argos Blood Fast, like, it does so little. Don't play this card, people out there. Don't play that. Yeah, damage is cool. See, here's why it's really bad. I just made that card completely ridiculous. It is 10 to 10. And I have lethal on the board. Okay, got there. Yeah, that don't play that card. Don't play that card. You're you're playing that card by saying I'm willing to take a turn off in approximately the sixth to eighth turn of the game. Because I know I'm going to be behind. Be more confident than that. You're not going to be behind. Like, you're not going to be. Like, just, that's your attitude, right? You're not going to be behind. You're going to be ahead. That's really good. That's a good attitude to have. Draft well. Draft well. That's all. Oh, we got all seven wins. How about that? I was on my tirade, didn't even notice. Well, we're definitely going to open the packs. Because, you know, we got this. Seven and two with our mostly junk deck. What do we got? No, we won't I keep forgetting I won't let you look at Volt Progress until you pack it up. So we got an Uncommon Wild card, which is great. Merfolk Mistbinder, which is a solid card. Uh, this card is not very good, at least in the current meta. Volt Progress, 8.1. That ain't happening for a while. Okay. What's next? Tomb Robber. Okay. They all can't be hits, you know? All right. Well, again, I want to thank you so much for sticking with me through this. Sorry about the effed up screen there. Uh, I didn't move stuff around. I know Dan's going to give me guff for it, but it is what it is. Uh, if you're looking for more content from us, look at uh, superliminalfilms.com. That's where we have everything we do. We post it all there. 
Um, so if you need something specific, whether it's a podcast, more games, or if you're into movies and you love movies like we do, we do a lot of film con stuff on there. We do horror films. We do comedy shorts. We do puppet stuff. I mean, we got it all over there, superliminalfilms.com. If you uh, like our live streams or you want to see our live streams where we play Arena, it's uh, twitch.tv slash superliminalfilms. And last but not least, if you're watching this on YouTube, it means you found us, Superliminal Films. We would love it if you would subscribe and if you ring our notification bell. That way you get alerted anytime we put new stuff up. And my name is Max, and for Superliminal Games, cast more spells. <laughs>